earlier it was digital first and then we started saying mobile first and then ai first and we were very clear it's going to be conversational ai first because that's natural so we build conversational ai agents for our organizations for our businesses for our government organizations so that they make their interaction with their consumers or their citizens more of human centric so we help organizations to make money save money make the customers happy what has been one of your most fulfilling moments uh, when you think of ai impacting lives right you've also worked very closely with the government's bashani project to make things more inclusive in multi languages the honorable prime minister said make ai in india make ai work for india and make ai work for the world we made all our products conversational like customer onboarding mm. conversation form filling mm. conversational commerce and conversation analytics right now do you believe that we are still in the disruption phase of ai and how soon will it become normalized in a sense the whole world is still storming right yeah. so form storm norm and perform mm. i think it's still in the storm mode mm. so i think we'll get into normalization mode soon mm. there is no country better than india to build ai platform because for ai we need data and data is here right with the virtue of population indians are very very adaptable give them a good tool they will use it and the performance would come from india Welcome to Up Close, a unique window into the next wave of innovation and opportunity. From early breakthroughs to the latest market shifts, we dive deep into the minds of those pushing boundaries, progressing technology, and fueling the economy. This is part of our Road to Tech Spark series. I'm Shivani Muthana, and today we get up close with Ankur Sabarwal, who is the co-founder and CEO of Corover.ai, one of the pioneers of conversational and generative AI in India. He has, of course, been at the forefront of building sovereign AI models like Bharat GPT, which is India's first multilingual LLM supporting 14 plus Indian languages. And through Corover, he has built both conversational agents and assistants for both the government and enterprises, impacting over a billion lives. Great to have you. with us here in the your story studio ankush no thank you shivani for having me here so ankush i'd like to really start from the beginning in terms of uh, the fact that you were building in the space of conversational ai a uh, much before it became mainstream so what really sort of um, kicked off that spark for you way back in 2016 and what keeps you hooked now the purpose was to do you know kind of natural conversation the way we are talking even the humans the users should talk to the machine the way two humans are talking and we were very very clear and we were even thinking hey earlier it was digital first and then we started saying mobile first and then ai first and we were very clear it's going to be conversational ai first because that's natural in 2016 especially uh, consumers were growing not just the population was growing but the adoption of users towards the digital platform was increasing um, the way users could reach out to the companies the service providers increased because of the adoption of social media and also thanks to geo the internet adoption also increased so now it was so easy for the consumers to say reach out to the service providers and practically it was not possible to handle all of these mm. um, customer queries right to started with customer support automation then we figured out hey it's so easy with ai to automate why because most of the consumers users had the same problem so now also say one customer say just pick up say one customer say irctc so say we get around 4 million users every day and if i see the dashboard it would be around 10 to 12 intents they come up with they want to book the ticket they want to cancel they want to change the boarding station they want to um take refund around 10 to 15 main things they keep asking so it's very it was very easy even with the old ai yeah. we call it as classic nlp mm -hmm. to classify the intent and the answer is going to be the same yeah so we thought you know it's good idea and it was not we can think hey let's have so many people in the call center so one is cost wise the second i don't think it's human it's it's natural to have so many people in the call center and say keep repeating the same answer again and again So I think that was the start, and then we then thought, hey, why just 
to give answers. Why just a question answer machine, mm. which most of the LLMs are doing now. So, but we did that say 2016 and then we thought, okay, not just question answer. Let's now even help them buy, yeah. help them even take the right decision and even complete the transaction. So we did that, even people can speak and book the train ticket, people can speak and buy grocery. So I think that was the uh, intent we had and that's continued. So we are trying to do whatever we are doing in a better way mm. and uh, scale it. Sure, and it's fascinating to see how all of that has evolved, right? It's been almost, uh, what, 9-10 years now and I think core over powers more than 100 plus large enterprises. So, um, like you mentioned, you've got IRCTC with the Ask Disha, you've also worked on government citizen services. So, for someone who is hearing core AI for the first time, how would you sort of simply explain to them what your platform does? See, we are a conversational AI platform. Now, yes, it's a Gen AI powered conversational AI platform. So we build conversational AI agents. So we do it for organizations, for businesses, for government organizations, so that they make their interaction with their consumers or their citizens uh, kind of more of human centric. So and so though our purpose is to improve the ease of living for the society, but we cannot just go to the consumers directly. We are B two B. So we are saying, hey going to the organization saying help us achieve our purpose mm -hmm. but they will not just probably follow our purpose because they are they are organizations they want to make money save money make their customers happy so we help organizations to do that yeah. using our conversational ai agents and uh, with which they are able to automate various use cases mm -hmm. it could be about customer support automation it could be even pre sales automation Right, so they get the leads and even the whole commerce part can mm. be automated and of course the after sales support. Sure, so it's like a composite AI platform is what you call yourself, both That's conversational correct. and generative AI. Absolutely, so okay. what is composite AI? Mm. Composite AI as you rightly said, there is a mix of three things. Mm. One is casual AI, for us it's classic NLP. Mm. We still do that intent classification, entity extraction, so very uh, entry level mm. AI. Mm. And then second is predictive AI. Mm. So. See, if you see most of the Gen AI which we currently use is all reactive, right? We hear about prompt engineering, write the right prompt, and there, now there are books how to write a prompt, yeah. right? So, uh, but if I already know what to ask, mm. right? I think 90% of the battle is won. Yeah. Asking right question mm. is important. Mm -hmm. Instead of reactive, we are trying to be proactive. Mm. So we know our users. Mm. We, we know what they want, when they want. So the predictive AI is very important. Now the third is the Gen AI. We have more than 30,000 enterprises, developers, researchers using our platform and they have built thousands of AI agents. So now, uh, since so much adoption, not everything is Gen AI based, right? Around 70 to 80% of our interaction is handled by just old AI. Not the rule based engine, Got it's it. it's AI, but mm. not Gen AI. Okay. And then around 10 to 20 percent is Gen AI. Mm. So composite AI is important so that we see the whole workflow mm. uh, to uh, kind of automate. It should not be, hey, I'm just a Gen AI company. I'll not do the payment part. I'll not do the farm filling. So only the AI part I will process. No. When we say build one AI agent, even if it takes IoT, even if it takes ERP, we do everything to make sure we create the human centric AI agent and it completes the workflow. Now, tell me about, you know, how important it is for your clients, you work with governments, you work with large enterprises to have grounded contextual AI versus, you know, the open-ended uh, AI versions that we have. There are companies who are saying, hey, our LLM is better than um, putting all the PhDs, putting together all the PhDs in all the subjects. Mm. Uh, so we don't take that approach uh, because uh, we are not general purpose LLM to answer every question, give answer about the latest information because it's very difficult to achieve, mm -hmm. let me ad admit mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. The second, that's not our purpose. Our purpose is of course helping society, helping organizations. Mm -hmm. And organizations have very clear information, their clear mandate, they know about their information. Right? Mm. So the information can be in the form of database, in the form of brochures they have, in the form of websites. 
So, and they would not like one rep representative. If you say AI agent is a representative, they would not like that AI agent to be you know, multiple PhD holders. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. They would like that AI agent to know only the information which they have approved. Right? So for organizations, very, very important to give the grounded, correct, accurate, latest information. So how does, uh, you know, Bharat GPT really fit into all of this? It is, of course, India's sovereign AI model. And how is it different from the chat GPTs and the Geminis of the world, right? Uh, because does every sort of client that uses Corover also use Bharat GPT? Or, you know, do they have different use cases altogether? That is one piece. And the other question I want to ask you is that uh, you sort of cater to 14 plus languages. So how um, challenging was it to really build it in terms of uh, language, context, cultural uh, switching, you know, the entire flow and fluency across such a massive linguistic approach. We are different because again, same, uh, it's a small model. Now we have recently launched Bharat GPT Mini, that's half a billion parameter. So it served the purpose because ultimately our information is not just sufficient. We build this model so that we understand English, NLU part, NLG part, but it doesn't have all the information of the world. So for every organization we go live with, so we have multiple approaches to go live. One is, hey, they have limited information mm. and the, our organizations, clients have limited information and we do RAG, RAG mm. with Bharat GPT and it works. Sometimes organizations have a lot of data. Yeah. So we can kind of fine tune Bharat GPT and say, hey, now this model is for you. Mm. And now we are also working where we create, we do pre-training mm. of the model for the organization. Now, sovereign AI, yes. So I think we, have, we are one of the few early, um, believers of sovereign AI now yes everyone is talking about it but if see now see every enterprise should mm. have their own AI yeah, yeah. or do all of our clients mm. um, adopt Bharat GPT not all of them mm. so we give them the option as I was saying um, if I know my users and uh, if I know what they ask when they ask uh, then I have so much data already right mm. for us building Bharat GPT was not a FOMO or me too because mm. others have done mm -hmm. right it was evolutionary for us because we were already doing it right mm. but in our core rovers platform yeah. we give option to the developers to choose either Bharat GPT or other LLM or you don't use LLM and you can train the conversational flows we have three layers in our platform mm. the first layer is conversational flow if this is the intent this should be the answer answer of course can be the fixed answer or it can be from APIs dynamic answer. The second is the grounded response with Bharat GPT. Mm -hmm. So if you add your PDF, website, and data. The third is you can choose your favorite LLMs, general purpose LLM, and get the answers from there also. Some of your um, assistants that you've launched say and ask Sarkar, ask Doc. It's about also making this, you know, trusted information more accessible. So uh, if you can tell me what has been one of your most fulfilling moments uh, when you think of AI impacting lives, right? Uh, you've also worked very closely with the government's Bashani project to make things more inclusive in multi-languages. Uh, so people came to know the kind of this kind of technology works uh, where even Honorable Prime Minister talking mm -hmm. about Asarkar mm -hmm. and then we mm -hmm. did Ask Doc during COVID. Okay. And mm -hmm. even Ask Tisha also had a journey. Earlier it was just question answer, then people started getting the refund status, then PNR mm -hmm. status, then people started doing ticket booking. And now even people can do even payment also with the voice. We work with NPCI very closely. We made conversational payments. Mm. So then, then we we made all our products conversational, like conversational onboarding, of customer onboarding, mm. conversation form filling. You just speak and the form would be yeah, filled. Yeah. Conversational commerce and conversation analytics. So now every company has uh, dashboard teams, right? So they keep creating new perspectives reports. So now we have few clients, we have integrated our platform with their dashboard database mm. and now they ask the query, they get the real time information from their database with the charts and inferences and a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I think we have to increase our horizons, not just thinking about the solutions, but we should keep, keep increase our horizons to articulate all the problems. So, Ankush, you also mentioned, you know, that you did have a chance to talk to uh, Prime Minister Modi. How did that conversation go, especially in terms of how do you see India balancing, you know, AI, data security, sovereignty and global competitiveness in the years going forward? I think India is very, very unique. Uh, if you see 
um, somehow uh, the balance is being maintained, uh, innovation and the security and the privacy and regulation point of view. I think that that's the right intent from the government. If you mm -hmm. see, uh, they are funding, right? There are grants from the government, there are equity funding from the government, and even for the startups, the RFP clauses have been exempted, few of them. Mm -hmm. we, we named Bharat GPT, we wanted to actually uh, focus in India. Right? And when we were in France, right, uh, I think a month ago, uh, people, the companies there are okay to adopt Bharat GPT. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So I think the first even Honorable Prime Minister went mm -hmm. there and then IT Minister uh, Jitin Prasada was there and I also got uh, opportunity to meet uh, President of France. It's AI, right? AI is very, very critical because a lot of data. If people are taking your AI product, means they have to trust you um, very fully, right? It's it's a lot of abstraction layer is there, and people started saying there is no explainability in AI, all of that, right? So, so now I think as Prime Minister said, make AI in India, make AI work for India, make AI work for the world. So, so we see that uh, getting. Uh, uh, you know, to wrap up our conversation, Ankush, you'll also be speaking at um, Tech Sparks 2025, which is our uh, marquee flagship uh, tech and startup event at Your Story, where the theme this year is India at 2030, powered by AI. Uh, so what would be your message? And also fast forward in terms of where Core Over and Bharat GPT is headed in the next five years. What is your aspiration for the company? If we enable the core functions which are required to live life, if we can, if we can use AI to make those important vital functions better, and then the whole economy, I'm not sure if it's hundred trillion dollar economy, so that becomes the core economy which AI can power. So um, I think 2030, uh, I'm sure uh, we would touch every industry in every use case with Core Over and Bharat GPT. And I'm sure the, the kind of um, the compounding we will get with AI adoption, uh, I'm sure India would be developed country before uh, 2047. So provided we keep our eyes, ears open and solve more problem than earlier we were thinking to solve. Right. So how do you sort of uh, look at India on the global AI stage, right? Right now, do you believe that we're still in the disruption phase of AI and how soon will it become normalized in a sense? There are two things, uh, again, uh, one is the AI platform and other is AI solutions. I think for the AI platform, again, there is no country better than India to build AI platform because for AI, we need data and data is here, right? So. We are speaking, the content is being created, right? Even when people watch this content, it's still content is being created. So we are rightly placed to build AI platforms. And the second, we have, we have with the virtue of population, uh, we and population plus India, Indians are very, very adaptable. Give them a good tool, they will use it. So, it, so then we have problems. If we build the right solution, India would use it, right? So and again, India, would have a lot of problem solvers uh, soon. So what's happening now, the whole world is is still uh, storming, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, form, storm, norm and perform. I think it's still in the storm mode. So I think we'll get into normalization mode soon and the performance would come from India. Okay, so on that note, uh, Wrap it up with you, Ankush. Thanks so much for taking us through what it really takes to build a human-centric uh, AI, both for India and the world. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Shivani.